Hello guys, welcome to lab 13 on OS lab. Today we are going to understand the concept of semaphores in order to achieve process synchronization. In the last lab we simulated the race condition which can arise if the processes are not synced. So in order to achieve process synchronization we use certain concepts like mutex logs or semaphores or monitors. In this particular lab we are going to focus on the concept of semaphore variable to achieve process synchronization and avoid the race condition. So before you begin with this tutorial, make sure that you have gone through the previous video on race condition because I am going to modify the same program to explain the use of semaphores in order to achieve synchronization between either threads or processes. I hope that you are enjoying the videos that I am posting. So do not forget to subscribe and do press the bell icon to receive notifications about all our latest videos. Now the first thing is sem underscore t. Now sem underscore t is not a function but rather a data type. If you remember that whenever we declare a variable we give the data type like int, float. So here also we are going to declare a variable whose data type will be sam underscore t. Next is the function sam underscore init. Now sam underscore init is the function which is going to initialize the semaphore variable. The third function that is important is sam underscore weight. Now sam underscore weight is a function which is similar to the weight that you have studied in the theory. So if you remember the semaphore variables you have two terms study ki thi, weight and signal. So weight was that function which we use before entering the critical section where it is going to check whether the resource is free or not. So sam underscore weight function is going to perform that part. Now the equivalent to signal is sam underscore post. So just remember theory may function name is signal but in the lab in the program, the function name that you are going to use is sam underscore post. So mostly students say sam underscore signal use. Kar lete. So just remember that the equivalent for signal in the lab is going to be sam underscore post. Now how the program flow is going to be. So first thing as I have already told you, you need to know the race condition. So if you have not race condition wala program, nahi kiya hua, just go back to that lab go to that concept and then only you will be able to understand this particular program using semaphores. So, sabse pehle humne kya karna? we need to declare a variable of the type sam underscore t. Second step kya hoga? We are going to initialize the variable. How we are going to do it? I am going to discuss later. Third, now I am not going to synchronize two processes but I am going to synchronize two threads. Concept is same. Okay. Chahe aap do threads ko synchronize karo ya fir aap do process ko the concept remains same. Okay. So in this case we are going to synchronize two threads. So do threads bana lene aapne thread 1 thread 2 that concept remains same. Then any of the thread will start and it will follow the sequence. Sam underscore weight then critical section portion, then sam underscore post. Similarly, the same flow will be there in the second thread. Sam underscore weight, critical section and sam underscore post. So this is the outline of the entire program that I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to avoid the race condition with the use of semaphore variable. No need to type this program. I'm sharing the link to the program in the description part. So you can just go there and copy paste this program in your Linux machine. So if you will analyze this, this program is 99% same to the program that we have done in the race condition. Okay. First important thing is you need an header file semaphore.h. So this is the new thing, first new thing, right? Now as defined in the program flow, we need to declare a semaphore variable whose data type has to be sam underscore t. 
All right. So first declare a variable s. This का data type क्या है? Sam underscore t. Initial value of the shared variable is one. Now, if I have to avoid the race condition, this means that my final value of the shared variable will also be one because one of the thread is going to increment this. The second thread is going to decrement it. So the final value of the shared variable has to be one, which was not the case when we did the race condition simulation, right? Within the main, the first thing is to initialize the semaphore variable. Now remember, there are three parameters that you will specify. Okay. Now, what are these parameters? So I'm just going to explain it separately. These three parameters. First parameter for sam underscore init is the address of the semaphore variable. So, जो आपने ऊपर semaphore variable s define किया है, उसका address. That's why the first parameter has to be ampersand and then whatever name s s one sam whatever name you have given. The second parameter will have the value either zero or a non-zero value. It will have the value zero if the synchronization or the semaphore variable is shared between threads. Like in this case, जो मैं प्रोग्राम आपको दिखा रहा हूँ, उसमें मैंने जो सिंक्रोनाइजेशन करी है, जो सेमाफोर वेरिएबल्स का यूज है, that is between threads. So in my case, the value will be zero. But if you want to synchronize processes, different processes, let us suppose you want to synchronize three processes, then the second parameter will be three. The third parameter is the initial value of the semaphore variable. So we are going to use the concept of binary semaphores. Hence, the initial value in case of binary semaphore is one. So one means that the semaphore variable is free. Zero means that the semaphore variable is being used. So coming back to the program, first parameter is the address of the semaphore variable. Second is zero because my program is going to use the semaphore variables among threads and third the initial value which is one next we are going to create two threads thread one thread two use p thread underscore create to create these threads join those threads finally print the value of the shared variable now thread one is the thread which is going to increment the value of the shared variable so thread one copies the value of the shared variable to a local variable x increments x and then updates the value of the shared variable. Now, this entire thing is actually the critical section part where the value of the shared resource is getting updated. Now, what I have done is I have used sem underscore wait before the critical section and sem underscore post after the critical section. So, this is the logic of semaphore variable. You use wait before entering the critical section and you use signal after the critical section. Now both these functions, sam wait and sam underscore post, the input parameter to both this is the address of the semaphore variable, right? Now how what it does? Sam underscore wait performs exactly the function that you have studied in the wait function in the theory. So just open that definition of the wait function. Now the wait function checks what is the value of s, right? Since we are using binary semaphore, this means the value will be either 1 or 0. If the value is 1, this means that no thread is in the critical section and this particular thread can do so. Right? This is what is in the while loop. Alright? But if the value of this semaphore variable is 0, if it is not 1, this means it is going to get stuck in the while loop and this wait function is never going to end. Because it is going to get stuck in the while loop. Okay. Now, if you remember initially, what we have done is we have set the value of the semaphore variable in sem underscore init function to 1. This means that since thread 1 is the first thread to run, so it will once it will run this sem underscore wait function, it will find the value of s to be 1. This means what? No other thread is in the critical section. So it is going to decrement the value of the semaphore variable by 1 and enter the critical section. So thread 1, wo semaphore variable s ki value kitni kar ab? 0 and will enter the critical section. So it will start performing these statements and once it gets to sleep, this means now it is going to sleep and 
द सिस्टम इज गोइंग टू शिफ्ट टू थ्रेड नंबर टू सो अभी क्या हो गया सेम ऑफ फोर वेरिएबल की वैल्यू कितनी हो गई जीरो एंड थ्रेड वन जो है वो स्लीप पे चला गया राइट सो नाउ थ्रेड टू विल गेट अ चांस टू रन थ्रेड टू अगेन विल फर्स्ट इश्यू सैम अंडर स्कोर वेट तो वो वेट फंक्शन दोबारा से एग्जीक्यूट करेगा थ्रेड टू नाउ व्हाट विल हैपन दिस टाइम थ्रेड टू इज गोइंग टू गेट स्टॉक इन दी वैल्यू वाई बिकॉज द वैल्यू ऑफ दैम ऑफ फोर वेरिएबल एस इज नॉट वन इट इज जीरो सो इट इज गोइंग टू गेट स्टॉक इन दी वैल्यू एंड इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू गो टू वाई इज इक्वल टू शेयर इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू गो टू दिस टाइम बिकॉज इट इज स्टक हेयर ओके नाउ इट इज गोइंग टू रिमेन स्टक इन दिस लूप अंटिल द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस सेम ऑफ फोर वेरिएबल बिकम्स वन अगेन ओके नाउ आफ्टर वन सेकेंड द थ्रेड वन इज गोइंग टू कम आउट ऑफ दिस स्लीप एंड वंस इट गेट्स दी प्रोसेसर इट गोइंग टू एग्जीक्यूट शेयर इज इक्वल टू एक्स देन प्रिंट दिस वैल्यू एंड देन फाइनली कॉल सेम अंडर स्कोर पोस्ट Now what will happen with this call? Sam underscore post. Sam underscore post is equivalent to signal. So if you look at the definition of signal, what it does, it simply increments the value of the semaphore variable. So semaphore variable's value is zero. Once thread one executes sam underscore post, so it is going to do what? It is going to increment the value of semaphore variable back to one. So again, the value of the semaphore variable becomes one. Thread one finishes. The control will come back to thread two, and it will again execute sam underscore wait. But now the value of the sam of four variable has again become one. So this time it will be able to enter the critical section by decrementing the value of s back to zero, and then perform this entire critical section part. Again call sam underscore post, and again increment the value of s back to one. so what happens with the use of sam underscore wait and sam underscore post that is overall user sam of four variable is only one thread is able to run in its critical section at one time so we have ensured mutual exclusion of both the threads so now what will happen there will be no risk condition the thread one executed separately and thread two was able to execute or run that critical section part Where it was modifying the shared variable only once the thread one finished. So the value of the shared variable will be back to the normal value, which is one. So let us run this process. Now you can see that thread one runs first. So thread one reads the value of one. Local updation of thread. Value of the shared variable updated by thread one. so you can see that the entire thread 1 has executed first and then thread 2 and finally coming back to the int main where we have printed the value final value of shared variable which is again 1 so thread 1 incremented the value to 2 and thread 1 decremented it back to 1 and hence we were able to avoid the race condition by the use of semaphore variable so the important points to remember is first one डिक्लेयर अ वेरिएबल इसका डेटा टाइप क्या होना चाहिए सैम अंडर स्कोर टी सेकेंड इनिशियलाइज सैम ऑफ वेरिएबल जीरो बिकॉज वी हैव यूज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ थ्रेड्स टू शेयर द सैम ऑफ फोर वेरिएबल थर्ड इनिशियल वैल्यू ऑफ द सैम ऑफ फोर वेरिएबल अब इनिशियल वैल्यू वन ही क्यों है टू क्यों नहीं है थ्री क्यों नहीं है दिस कैन बी अ इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन हमने इसमें बाइंडी सैम ऑफ फोर का कॉन्सेप्ट यूज किया है इसलिए The initial value is one. अगर आप counting semaphore का concept use करोगे then the value can be टू थ्री फोर depending upon how many instances of the resource you are using. Next, हमने दो threads create किए join किया and finally print the value of the shared variable. This is same as in the race condition. Okay? Finally, within the thread आपने दो चीजें और add करनी है sam underscore weight. स्टार्टिंग में एंड सैम अंडरस्कोर पोस्ट बाद में सो दिस इज गोइंग टू एंश्योर दैट ओनली वन ऑफ द थ्रेड इज एक्चुअली इन इट्स क्रिटिकल सेक्शन एट एनी गिवन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो आई होप दैट नाउ यू विल बी एबल टू इंप्लीमेंट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सेमाफोर्स नॉट ओनली इन थ्योरी बट ऑल्सो इन प्रैक्टिकल
in the next video we are going to cover process synchronization by using the concept of mutual logs so till then keep watching this tutor do not forget to subscribe and share see you in the next class